Starting from this video, we'll write the function first of all. So here I'm inside Uniswap v3 pool contract. And the first thing that I'll do is copy this function definition. Go over to our contract and then we'll paste this function definition. I'll paste it here. Let's first talk about the inputs and the outputs. The inputs are recipients 0 for 1. This means that token 0 will come in and then token 1 will go out. If 0 for 1 is false, then the trade goes all the way. Token 1 will come in and then token 0 will go out. Amount specified is the amount specified for the trade. If this number is greater than 0, then this means that this swap will be an exact input. And this means that the user defined the amount of tokens to come in and the contract will calculate the amount of tokens that go out. On the other hand, if amount specified is less than 0, then the trade goes the other way. User has defined the amount of tokens to go out and this contract will calculate the amount of tokens that must come in. Square root price limit x96. If the current square root price reaches this limit, then the trade will stop. And data. Data to be used for the callback. Now, inside our contract, we don't have any hooks, so I'll remove this data. No need to override. You don't have a no delegate call. Now, however, we're going to put a re-entrancy lock over here, so we'll say lock. And then it's going to return two outputs, amount 0 and amount 1. Here, a positive number will indicate that a token must come inside this contract, and a negative amount will indicate that the token is going to the user. It is being transferred to the user. So these are the function inputs and outputs. The next thing that I'll do is define some structs. So going back to the Uniswap B3 pool contract, if I scroll up, these are the structs that are involved in the swap contract, in the swap function. So I'm going to copy these and then head over to our contract, paste it here, and we're going to remove some of the fields that we don't need. Fee protocol, we don't need it inside our smart contract. Liquidity start, we're going to need this. Block timestamp, tick cumulative, seconds per liquidity cumulative x128 and computed last observation. These are fields related to the price oracle. We don't have a price oracle so I'll remove these fields. So our struct swap cash only has one field, liquidity start. This will be the liquidity at the beginning of a swap. Okay let's move on. Swap state, amount specified remaining, we're gonna need this, amount calculated. This will be the amount calculated by this contract. For exact in, amount calculated will be the amount that goes out. And for exact output, this will be the calculated amount that must come in. The current square root price, tick, fee growth global x128. This is needed for the fees. We'll keep it, but we won't touch on it till the last section of this video series. Protocol fees, we're not gonna need it. And the current liquidity, we will need this. Okay, the last chuck is step computations. Square root price start x96, you'll need tick next initialized, square root price next x96, amount in amount out, and fee amount. We're gonna need all of these fields. Okay, so these are the struct. Moving on, what I want to do next is go to the swap contract, and for the rest of this video, I want to explain most of the code inside the swap contract, except for the actual part that does the swap. So going to our contract, the first thing that we'll do is require that amount specified is not equal to zero. Require amount specified is not equal to zero. Okay, the next thing that we'll do is load slot zero. So say slot zero, memory, we'll call it slot zero start is equal to slot zero. Slot zero is a state variable and we're loading this onto memory to save some gas. Okay, the next thing that we'll do is check that square root price limit x96 is a valid square root price. If we're doing the trade for 0, 4, 1, then the price will be pushed to the left. So this means that the square root price limit should be to the left of the current square root price. And likewise, if we're doing a 1, 4, 0 trade, then the current square root price will shift to the right. So our limit should be to the right of the current price. Say require. Is this a 0, 4, 1 trade? 0, 4, 1. If it is, then the square root price limit x96 should be to the left of the current square root price. Slot 0 start dot square root price x96. And this square root price x96 should be greater than the minimum. And square root price limit x96 should be greater than tick math dot min square root ratio. Otherwise, if this trade is a 140, then we'll do something similar. So I'll just copy this, paste it here. 
the square root price x96 should be to the right of the current square root price x96 and this should be less than the max. And then we'll say that the error message is invalid square root price limit. Okay, next we'll load the swap cache. So going back up, we're going to be filling this struct. And the only field that we'll need to fill out is liquidity start. So going here, say swap cache memory, we'll name it cache, is equal to swap cache. And the only field, liquidity start, will be liquidity from the state variable. Okay, next we'll create a Boolean called exact input. Exact input. Is this an exact input? Well, this will be an exact input if amount specified is greater than zero. Okay, what's the next thing that we need to do? Uh, open the Uniswap B3 pool contract and then scroll up. So at the moment we're here. The next step is to initialize a struct called swap state. So I'll copy this and then go back to our contract paste it. Okay, so this is swap state. We initialize amount specified remaining as amount specified from the input. Amount calculated is initialized as zero. Square root price x96 is the current square root price x96. The current tick, fee growth global x128. If this is a trade for a 041, then we initialize this to fee growth global 0x128. Otherwise, we initialize it to fee growth global 1x128. This is a state variable that keeps track of fees. Have we defined this state variable yet? Let's scroll up and check whether we declare this state variable. So scroll up. Okay, it looks like I have not declared any state variables for fee growth global. So let's declare them. uint 256 public fee growth global 0x128. And then we'll do the same for 1x128. Okay, go back to our swap contract. To our swap function for our contract we don't have any protocol fee so we can remove this and liquidity and liquidity is cash liquidity so this will be the same as the state variable liquidity okay what's the next step so go back to the swap contract the next step is to run some kind of for loop that will calculate the amount calculated inside the while loop it's going to calculate this part for this video we will skip it so I'll say while true do something and then put a comment to do. Okay, let's go back to Uniswap B3 pool contract. So we're gonna skip this while loop. And what is the next step? The next step is to update the current square root price x96 and the current ticks. So inside our contract here, I'll say update the square root price x96 and the tick. Say if state dot tick is not equal to slot zero start dot tick. So what does this state mean? Well, if you go up, we declared it here, and this state will be updated inside this while loop. How about slot zero start? Slot zero start, we declared it over here, and this variable is not gonna change. So what this means is that if the tick at the beginning of the trade is not equal to the tick after the trade, then we'll need to update. We'll update the current square root price and the tick. Slot zero dot square root price x96 and slot 0 dot tick is equal to the latest square root price and the latest tick will be stored in state state dot square root price x96 and state dot tick otherwise the tick has not moved but since there was a trade the square root price may have moved in this case we'll just update square root price slot 0 dot square root price x96 is equal to state dot square root price x96. Let's go back to the Uniswap B3 pool contract. So we finished this part. What's the next part? The next part is to update liquidity. Okay, we'll update liquidity. So say if cash dot liquidity start is not equal to state dot liquidity state.liquidity will be the current liquidity after the trade cash.liquidity start will be the liquidity before we did the trade if this is not equal then we'll update the liquidity state variable liquidity is equal to state.liquidity okay let's go back to the Uniswap b3 pool contract again and the next part is updating the fee growth global we'll go back to our contract if 
041. Now V is taken from the token that comes in. So if this was a 041 tray, then token in is token 0. So the fee growth global that increased will be fee growth global 0x128. So we'll update this. Fee growth global 0x128 is equal to the latest fee growth global will be stored in state. State dot fee growth global x128. Otherwise, token in was token 1, so we'll update fee growth global 1 next 1 to 8. So this was update fee growth. What's the next step? We'll go back to the Uniswap v3 pool contract. The next step is this code. What I'm going to do is copy this code and then paste it here. This code over here is calculating the amount of token in and the amount of token out. However, it's not clear why this condition 0 for 1 is equal to exact input will give the correct amount for amount 0 and amount 1. So I want to explain what's going on over here. What I've done here is laid out the four possibilities of 0 for 1 combined with exact input. 0 for 1 can either be true or false. And exact input can either be true or false. In each of these cases, Let's see what amount 0 and amount 1 should be. In the case of 0 for 1 and exact input, amount 0 that's going to go into the pool will be the amount specified by the user minus the amount specified remaining that was calculated from this contract. This contract is going to try to pull in amount specified, but if it cannot, then we're going to minus amount specified remaining. How about amount 1 for 0 for 1 and exact input? Well, amount 1 this will be the amount that will be calculated from this contract. This will be amount calculated. This will be the same case for a trade of 140 and exact output. So when 041 is false and exact input is also false. When 041 is false, token in will be token 1 and token out will be token 0. And exact input false means that the amount out was specified. Amount out is token 0. So this value is known, specified minus remaining. What needs to be calculated is the amount that goes in, amount 1, or token 1. Notice that in the case of 0 for 1 equals to true and exact input equals to true, or when 0 for 1 is false and exact input is false, we have the matching condition. Amount 0 is specified minus remaining, and amount 1 is calculated. When we do a trade for 140 and exact input, we're basically doing the same calculation as this, except we're flipping the token in and token out. Token 0 will be calculated and token 1 will be specified. It's the same case as over here, but we're just flipping the tokens. And likewise, for 0 for 1 and not exact input, we're going to be flipping this situation. Amount 0 will be calculated and amount 1 will be specified minus remaining. Now we listed all of the conditions and let's compare it with this code. So when 0 for 1 is equal to exact input, this is either both of them are true or both of them are false. Then amount 0 will be amount specified minus remaining and amount 1 will be calculated. Otherwise, when these two variables differ, then amount 0 will be calculated and amount 1 will be specified minus remaining. Amount 0 is calculated amount 1 is specified minus remaining. So this code over here is a short way of handling this situation. Okay, and the last step is to transfer the tokens. So we'll say if 0, 4, 1. If it is a 0, 4, 1, then the token that goes out is token 1. And if it is going out, this number will be negative. So say if amount 1 is less than 0, then we'll type IERC20 token 1 dot transfer to to recipient, recipient, for the amount, amount 1 is negative, so we'll cast it into a positive number, uint256 minus amount 1. And then we'll need to transfer token 0. Transfer token 0, transfer from, from message.sender to this contract, address this for the amount, amount 0. If this was not a 0 for 1 trade, then we'll do the opposite. Copy this code. Paste it here. Token out will be token 0. So if amount 0 is less than 0, then we transfer out token 0 for the amount amount 0. And we transfer in token 1 for the amount amount 1. Okay, that completes the swap function. 
except for the while loop that actually calculates the amount of token that either goes in or goes out. We'll work on this in the following videos. For now, let's try compiling the contract. Sign my terminal, I'll type forge build. Okay, did our contract compile and our contract compiled successfully.